Chenography Park Jongjin of Gyeongbuk National University will present the topic Underwater Glider Innovation of Ocean Observation. Good morning. I am Park Jongjin from Gyeongbuk National University, and I am here to present Underwater Glider Innovation of Ocean Observation. The little yellow um, plane-like um, vehicle is the underwater glider. And on the right, you see the white points on the right-hand side map. That is the current location of the underwater glider. The one that uh, was um, set out last September is currently conducting research. It's uh, yesterday this time. This time yesterday, uh, the vehicle was gliding towards the core coast of Korea. And this morning, I found that the glider was heading back out to the ocean. So even as we speak, the glider is hard at work conducting research and um, retrieving important information for us. So I'm going to talk about what underwater glider is and what kind of activities are being conducted. First of all, um, before I go into underwater glider, gliders, let me start with the difficulties of ocean observation. Climate change is a very important issue nowadays, and um, predicting the climate in the future is more important than ever. Even so, predicting the future, we call it forecasting. Um, understanding the present is called now casting. So we need the right now casting in order for us to predict the future with the right forecast. And now casting is done by observation. Observation itself is quite difficult to do in the ocean for three reasons. Number one, electromagnetic wave is absorbed fully by water to sense the object, any objects, or to use sensors, we often use electromagnetic wave. But in space, where there are no um, interfering particles to electromagnetic waves, uh, we are able to understand what's happening um, far into the distance, even for year, light years away. But in the ocean, Electromagnetic wave is fully absorbed, so we have no idea what's happening in the oceans. Then how do we understand the ocean? We have to place the sensor underwater ourselves. To do that, we need to ride out into the sea. And this is the second challenge, because operating a ship is high cost. So observation data in certain locations will incur high cost. And when we use a ship, it is weather biased, so we cannot um, go out in the sea where in bad weather, so that means less data. And third, biofouling, um, biological fouling of our data and our machines. So because ocean is very an active area, sometimes biofouling bio will be done on our sensors, and sometimes that leads to a huge error in the data that we retrieve. So for these reasons, we are limited in our ocean observation, and any information that we acquire on the ocean is very little. And even that little information we have, sometimes it's biofiled and therefore not accurate. And it is very difficult for us to understand the ocean. So now casting on the ocean is quite difficult to achieve. So to resolve these challenges, first we need to collect as much ocean data as possible, and that's why we are building up an autonomous ocean observation network across the ocean. So this network uses multiple robotics and vehicles to efficiently um, obtain as much data as possible on the ocean. But there are two issues here as well. There's the fixed observation and there's the mobile observation. For fixed observation, we call them mooring observation, which has more than 100 years of history. It's been done for a long period of time. But for mobile observation, in the past, ships were the only platform where we could conduct um, mobile observation. 
an autonomous observation was impossible to conduct, but with underwater gliders um, commercialized, ship observation could be replaced with underwater gliders. And that's how we came to build this um, network. This is run across the world. And an essential part of the network is underwater gliders. So underwater gliders use the buoyancy to glide through the water and observe the ocean. On the water surface, uh, the water is pulled into the glider in order to submerge into the water like a submarine. And the glider would uh, glide through the water horizontally. So it is just like how a plane flies in the air. But a flying glider cannot, uh, once it lands, cannot fly back up. But a glider can lose the water inside it and become more lighter and uh, with the buoyancy can rise back up to surface. So uh, it repeats going submerging itself and going, coming back to sh the surface. So it requires very little energy consumption compared to a propeller um, type of glider. We can deploy it and it can operate for months and move around for hundreds of kilometers. Underwater gliders, again, is a very essential part of the observation network and is often used, but it can also be used to monitor the sea ice, um, the fish or marine mammal monitoring, and ocean pollutions. For other special purposes, gliders are also used. Underwater glider, as long as reading the manual, turning it on, and deploying it underwater, it doesn't happen that way. It requires a very complicated system and equipment to operate underwater gliders. Otherwise, we cannot obtain the data we want and sometimes the gliders can be damaged if operated improperly. We have our own uh, specialized technology to run the gliders, and now we have the level of a uh, world-renowned um, operation of underwater gliders. After one or two years of training and some experience, anyone can work as a underwater glider pilot because we have um, the necessary program. Uh, we mostly focus on the East Sea, and we also look at the Northwest Pacific, where we operate uh, mainly our underwater gliders. And I will go. I am going to share with you the actual case example of how we operated our gliders. So, in August 2017, the one in the white is the distance covered, and the one in the purple are the areas where the NIFS ship conducted its research. So if you look at the um, white dots, you can see that the glider follows its path quite accurately. But this is not easy to do. It is done by specialized um, pilots. They operate the gliders to follow the path precisely. So the chart on the bottom are the temperature section and the salinity section obtained from the gliders on the top and on the bottom, the ones we acquired from shipboard CTD. So you can see there's an area where there is a grad, uh, dramatic shift in temperature, sec temperature section. And underwater, we found the intrathermocline eddy, which is a very important um, factor in forming fishing grounds, but you do not find that well in the CTD data. This is because a uh, glider glides through horizontally and conducts a research and obtains data every two meters, but the shipboard CTD is acquired every 25 meters. So spatial observation by a ship is to uh, has a far interval, so the more meticulous observation is not conducted by ships. 
And not only spatially, but temporally as well. When we deployed the 20, in 2020 our underwater glider, we ran it for 18 days, um, covering a distance of 2,500 kilometers. We conducted uh, six round trips with the glider, and we were able to obtain 12 sections. The main data we obtain are temperature and salinity information, and we are able to look at a temporal change in those two areas in a, with a very uh, short interval for the first time. Each section is a week apart, and you can see we, from the glider data that uh, even in a span of a week, the ocean changes quite dramatically. Currently, the ship observation happens every two months, so that is indicated in the purple box. So as you can see that the EC is changing very quickly, but the ship data is not enough to show us the dramatic changes taking place over time. So whatever is lacking can be confirmed through the glider um, data. We were able to confirm that ship data is not enough. So um, this in 2020, um, Typhoon Maisak passed through uh, the EC, um, doing much harm to Korea. When Typhoon Maisak was passing through, the glider was at work in the sea. So when the typhoon was passing, uh, based on that typhoon trajectory, uh, we moved the glider uh, to close to the typhoon and conducted a virtual mooring. Uh, observation. So as you can see on the top left side, uh, position keeping control is possible to do on an underwater glider. So we did a vertical and temporal high resolution observation uh, very near the typhoon. And this was done for the first time in Korea. The top right graph is the temperature, the one in the uh, purple line that indicates the typhoon Misa when typhoon Misa passed through. So you can see when the typhoon passes, the temperature drops but rises on near surface. And deep in the ocean, there are waves that are made by the typhoon. You can see there's a very intense wave um, happening. But in, down in deep in the water, there's an upwelling of cold water. And after the typhoon passes through, there is a phytoplankton bloom. So these types of various re reaction in the ocean to a typhoon was able to be observed. Lastly, in the South Sea, where there is very dominant tidal tide, um, we also conducted an observation with underwater glider. There, this water is tide dominant, and the currents are two to three times faster than in the EC. So the pilots who are not familiar with running the gliders. Uh, may think that they cannot operate a glider in these waters, but that's not true. Every 12 hours, the current comes back to its place, and the glider basically runs far longer than 12 hours. So sea currents do not interfere with the operation of an underwater glider. In the South Sea, for the first time, August this year, we deployed the glider and conducted the data very success, uh, observed and acquired data very successfully. But before we deployed the glider, we are able, we need to plan out um, the operation very meticulously ahead of time. For 24 kilometers offshore, we um, did a round trip observation spanning 1.5 kilometers. And the uh, glider path is indicated in gray, although the sea, because of the sea current, the glider is uh, swaying back and forth. It is still following the path as designed. And on the red path, uh, we collected data along the way for spatial um, understanding of the ocean. So. At the national level, we conduct uh, ocean research, and three to five times higher resolution data was uh, able to be observed and obtained with underwater glider. So again, this requires specialized equipment and training. 
and facilities. But even if other um, parties are to run the glider, it is very difficult to set up the equipment and training programs and facilities needed, which is too high cost and will take a long time. So we are open to sharing the what we have, the specialized staff, the technology, and the quality of programs that we have inside. So we receive requests from other um, organizations to where they entrust us to conduct the um, glider operation, and we have done this since last October. Uh, we believe that these requests will only grow in the future. So in Ulgin, we are currently building a house center for completion in 2024. Uh, this will be a three-floor building to respond to various requests. In Gyeongbuk National University, we have a glider operation center set up and for pilot operations, um, applications are conducted here. We have eight underwater gliders in operation at the center. Thank you very much. And this final video is from 2018, uh, where we deployed the glider in Northwest Pacific. Professor Cho Yong Hyun uh, from Pugyong National University um, shot this video with a drone. Thank you very much. Thank you for the presentation, Dr.